The Battle of Taiyuang was a battle of the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1938, between the armies of the Republic of China, and the Empire of Japan. The battle was the first major Chinese victory of the war. It humiliated the Japanese military, and its reputation as an invincible force, while for the Chinese it represented a tremendous morale boost. Taiyuang is located on the eastern bank of the Grand Canal of China, and was a frontier garrison northeast of Shuzhou. It was also the terminus of a local branch railway from Lincheng. Shuzhou itself was the junction of the Jinpu Railway, the Longhai Railway, and the headquarters of the KMT's Fifth War Zone. Chapter 1 – Background Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Political and Strategic Situation By 1938, the Chinese military had suffered tremendous losses following the fall of Shanghai and Nanjing. In particular, its air force and navy had both been virtually wiped out. Nonetheless, China's resolve in resisting the Japanese invasion showed no signs of weakening. On 30 January, the Japanese military high command, after evaluating the situation in China, decided that no new offensive operations shall be conducted until August. Emperor Hirohito's stance was even more conservative, he believed that it would take at least a year for the Japanese to solidify their positions in their newly captured territory and consolidate their strength before conducting any further operations. Thus, the Japanese High Command decided to wait until 1939 before conducting a swift, aggressive offensive in order to decisively end the war in China. At the same time, Chiang Kai-shek refused to accept the Japanese terms for surrender, resulting in Japan publicly declaring, from now on, we will no longer negotiate with the KMT government. On 20 February, China withdrew its ambassador Xu Shoying from Japan. The next day, Japan followed suit, withdrawing its ambassador Kawagoa Shigeru. Earlier that year, Chiang had also resigned from his post as Premier of the Executive Yuan, in order to fully dedicate his efforts to the war. The respective actions taken by both sides was indicative of their attitude towards the war, China was now fully committed, while Japan still showed some signs of hesitation. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Military Situation Despite Hirohito's declaration that no new offensives would be conducted in 1938, the Japanese forces in China were eager to continue their offensive, with morale reaching a peak following the fall of Nanjing. The IJN's preferred strategy would have been to continue advancing westwards along the Yangtze River to invade Wuhan. However, the IJ was reluctant to continue following this approach of following waterways, and instead pursued the Chinese army retreating from the Shanghai Nanjing Theater, driving northwards into the three provinces of Jiangsu, Shandong, and Henan. A significant proportion of the Chinese forces that withdrew from Shanghai crossed the Yangtze River northwards into the Jiangbei region. During the retreat from Nanjing, many scattered Chinese troops also found themselves drifting down the Yangtze and into Jiangbei. The Aija saw this as an opportunity to pursue and destroy this cluster of disorganized Chinese troops, thus ignoring the IJN's strategy of following the Yangtze westwards. Throughout December 1937, Ripai Ogasu's 13th Division pursued the fleeing Chinese forces, capturing Jiangdu, Xiaobo, and advancing into Anhui to capture Tianshang. Simultaneously, in northern China, Rinsu Kaisagai's 10th Division, advanced southwards between Qingcheng and Jiang to cross the Yellow River, approaching the Zhaoji Railway. Gaining access to the railway would enable it to move westwards then southwards to clear the Jinpu Railway and join forces with the 13th Division at Shuzhou. From there, the combined Japanese forces could attack Wuhan and force the KMT into surrender. The war had thus moved from the 3rd to the 5th War area. Chapter 1 Section 3 – The Chinese Fifth Theater the Chinese Fifth Theater was bordered by the Yellow River in the north, Yangtze River in the south, and Yellow Sea in the east. The area encompassed all of Shandong Province, as well as parts of Anhui and Jiangsu. Its commander was Li Zongren, and its deputy commanders were Li Pingxian and Han Fuju, the latter also being the chairman of Shandong. 
Despite having risen through the ranks and followed Chiang Kai-shek in the Second Northern Expedition, Han was unable to shake the habits of warlordism, seeking to preserve the strength of his forces, he disobeyed direct orders to defend the northern section of the Jinpo Railway, withdrawing his force, the Third Army Group, westwards without ever engaging the Japanese. This opened up a large gap in the Fifth War Area's northern region, allowing the Japanese 10th Division to capture Zawakun. On the 27th, the Japanese captured Jinan, and in less than a week they had also captured Tai'an. Chapter 1 Section 4, Shuzhou The Japanese advance on Shuzhou consisted of three routes. 13th Division, commanded by Ripai Ogasu, advancing northwards from Nanjing. 5th Division, commanded by Seishiro Itagaki, amphibiously landing at Qingdao, and advancing along the Taiwai Highway. 10th Division, commanded by Rinsuke Isagai, advancing southwards from Hebei. An ancient city, Shuzhou was a hub linking together the four provinces of Jiangsu, Shandong, Henan, and Anhui. It was also a junction connecting the Longhai and Jinpu railways. The Grand Canal also ran adjacent to it, connecting the Yellow and Yangtze rivers. The city was also the cradle of Han culture, and, for thousands of years, had been a city of vital military importance, with more than 200 wars having been fought in its vicinity over the course of 4,000 years. Capturing Shuzhou would allow the Japanese to advance westwards to attack Zhengzhou via the Longhai Railway, and from there drive southwards to attack Wuhan via the Pinghan Railway. Chapter 2 Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1 The Chinese Army At the time, the NRA Fifth War Area lacked significant military strength. This was a serious issue given the vital importance of Shuzhou. Its commander, Li Zongren, was an old rival of Chiang Kai-shek. While they had become sworn brothers during the Northern Expedition, their intense rivalry quickly ignited almost immediately afterwards, culminating in the Central Plains War. Although their rivalry would never come to an end, they set it aside for the time being to focus on the war effort against Japan, with Chiang sending his vice chief of staff by Chongxi to Shuzhou in January 1938. Li and Bai were old comrades from the new Guangxi clique, and had served alongside each other since the Battle of Longton in the Northern Expedition. At the request of Bai, Chiang sent Li the Third War Area's 21st Army Group. Also a unit from Guangxi, the 21st was commanded by Liao Lei and consisted of the 7th and 47th Corps. At this time, Sun Zhen's 22nd Army Group, a unit from the Sichuan clique also arrived at the Shanxi Henan region, only to be rejected by both Yen Shishan and Cheng Chen. Both Yen and Cheng disliked units from Sichuan for their poor discipline, particularly their rampant opium consumption. During the 1930s, opium consumption was widespread in Sichuan and Yunnan. Furthermore, China's extreme poverty, which was substantially exacerbated by the Japanese invasion, meant that opium tax remained an important source of income for regional governments. Under the command of Sun Zhen, the 22nd Army Group had deployed four of its six divisions to assist the war effort in northern China. Organized under the 41st and 45th Corps, the contingent began its foot march towards Taiyan on 1 September, marching for more than 50 days continuously and covering some 1,400 kilometers. When they arrived in Shanxi, they were confronted with an icy winter. Despite lacking winter uniforms or even a single map of the province, they immediately engaged the Japanese for 10 days at Yangchuan, incurring heavy casualties. Desperately low on supplies, they broke into one of the Shanxi clique's supply depots, infuriating Yen Shishan, who expelled them from the province. The 22nd then withdrew westwards into the First War area, only for its commander, Cheng Chen to reject its request for resupplies. At this time of desperation for the 22nd, Bai Chongxi asked Li Zongren whether he was willing to accept this Sichuan unit. Li responded by saying, back in the day, Juga Liang dared to even use straw soldiers to acquire arrows. Surely these Sichuan troops cannot be worse than straw soldiers. Give them to me. Thus, 
The 22nd gratefully entered Shandong, where it was deployed to the northern section of the Jinpo Railway. With Sun Tungshuan's 3rd Army Group on its left flank, the 22nd faced the Japanese 10th Division, led by Rinsuk Isagai at Tian. At the time, poor discipline was commonplace amongst the Chinese Army's regional units, which were often hastily drafted and organized from bandit groups and led by officers two-thirds of whom were illiterate. Poor discipline also pervaded the higher ranks, with Han Fuju being an archetypal example. Seeking to stamp out this problem, Chieng conducted a military conference at Kaifeng on of January to produce a collected report on military discipline. Attending the conference were high-ranking general officers from the 1st and 5th War areas, including Han Fuju. After the conference, Han was arrested and detained in Wuhan. Under the direction of the Director of Military Law, Tang Shengzi, who had led the defense of Nanjing a year earlier, Han was sentenced to death and executed on the 24th, at the age of 49, making him the first Chinese high-ranking general officer to have been executed in the war. Han's execution had a significant impact on military discipline throughout the Chinese army. Matters discussed at the Kaifeng Conference included not only wartime punishments, but also rewards. The NRA's system of rewards and punishments would be rigorously carried out until the end of the war. Sun Tungshuan succeeded Han as acting commander of the 3rd Army Group, whose later admirable performance during engagements along the northern section of the Jinpo Railway would become a representative example of the impact of the NRA's reorganization of military discipline. By February 1938, the 5th War Area had mustered a total of 29 divisions, with a total strength of 288,000 men. This force consisted entirely of various regional units from across China. Sun Zhen's 22nd Army Group and Yang Sen's 6th Army Group were from the Sichuan clique. Han Dikans was formed from the Jiangsu Peace Preservation Corps. Pang Bingxian's 3rd Army and Jiang Zizhong's 27th Army were from the Northwestern Army. Li Lei's 21st Army Group and Li Pingxian's 11th Army Group were from the new Guangxi clique. Yu Zuizhong's 51st Corps was from the Northeastern Army. Sun Tungshuan's 3rd Army Group was a unit from Shandong. Chapter 2 Section 2 The Japanese Advance Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Southern Route Commanded by Ripai Ogasu, the Japanese 13th Division, drove westwards from Nanjing via two columns in early February, the northern column advanced towards Mingguang, while the southern column advanced towards Chuxian. Both columns were checked by Wei Yunsong's 31st Corps, which had been tasked with defending the southern section of the Jinpo Railway by Li Zongren. Despite facing a completely inferior enemy, the Japanese were unable to make any progress even after more than a month of continuous attacks. The Japanese then deployed armored and artillery reinforcements, from Nanjing. The Chinese responded by withdrawing westwards to the southwestern outskirts of Dingyuan in order to avoid direct confrontation with their reinforced foes. By this time, Yu Zuizhong's 51st Corps had already positioned itself defensively on the northern banks of the Wai River, forming a defensive line between Bengbu and Haiyuan. The Japanese proceeded to successively capture Mingguang, Dingyuan, and Bengbu before advancing towards Haiyuan. However, their supply routes were then intercepted by the Chinese 31st Corps, which conducted flanking attacks from the southwest. The Japanese situation was worsened further when the Chinese 7th Corps then arrived at Hefei, reinforcing the 31st Corps. Engaged by three Chinese corps simultaneously, the Japanese were trapped south of the Wai River and unable to advance any further despite enjoying complete air superiority and having a complete advantage in firepower. The Chinese had thus foiled the Japanese plan of advancing their 13th Division northwards along the Jinpo Railway and joining forces with Isagai Division to launch a pincer attack on Shuzhou. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 3 Northeastern Route After amphibiously landing at Qingdao, the Japanese 5th Division advanced southwestwards along the Taiwai Highway, spearheaded by its 21st Infantry Brigade. There they faced the Chinese 3rd Army Group, 
commanded by Pang Bingxian. Despite being designated as an army group, Pang's unit only consisted of the 40th Corps, which itself only consisted of the 39th Division, a unit from the Northwestern Army. Led by Division Commander Ma Fall, the 39th's five regiments ended up delaying the Japanese advance towards Linyi for over a month. The Japanese captured Ju County on the 22nd of February and pushed towards Linyi on the 3rd of March. However, they were met by a stiff Chinese counterattack, which checked them at the Taoyuan region. The Japanese then conducted heavy aerial bombardment on the single Chinese division, forcing it to withdraw into Linyi. During this time, Jiang Zizhong's 59th Corps, also a northwestern unit, had moved eastwards from Shuzhou along the Longhai Railway, passing Taiyuan before advancing northwards towards Linyi. It crossed the Yi River on the 12th of March and attacked the Japanese left flank, engaging them from 13 to 18 March, during which the 39th Division managed to push the Japanese out of the Linyi region. Pursued by the Chinese from two directions, the Japanese were forced to withdraw, losing almost two entire battalions in the process. This engagement broke the myth of Japanese invincibility and also humiliated Japanese commander Seishiro Itagaki, even shocking the Aija headquarters. Although the Japanese 5th Division later regrouped and tried again, it had lost the element of surprise. The Japanese defeated Linyi at the hands of the inferiorly trained and equipped Chinese regional units set the scene for the eventual battle at Taiyuan. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 4 Northern Route Of the three Japanese divisions driving into the Chinese Fifth War area, the 10th Division, commanded by Rinsuke Isagai, was the most successful. Setting out from Hebei, it crossed the Yellow River and moved southwards along the Jinpo Railway. With KMT General Han Fuju having ordered his forces to desert their posts, the Japanese successfully captured Zawakun and moved into Jinan without meeting any resistance at all. The Japanese then advanced southwards along two columns from Taiyan. The eastern column captured Mengian before pushing westwards to capture Sisui. The western column advanced southwestwards along the Jinpo Railway, capturing Yanzu, Zuxian, and Jining, before driving northwestwards to capture Wenshang. Chiang Kai-shek then ordered Li Zongren to utilize offensive defense, i.e. seizing the initiative to actively attack, instead of passively defending. Thus, Li deployed Sun Zhen's 22nd Army Group to attack Zuxian from the south while Pang Bingxian's 40th Division advanced northwards along the 22nd's left flank to attack Mengian and Sisui. Sun Tungxuan's 3rd Army Group also advanced from the south, launching a two-pronged attack on the Japanese at Jining. Fighting fiercely from 12 to 25 February, the respectable combat performance of the 12th Corps in particular helped to ameliorate the reputational damage that Hanfuju had otherwise inflicted upon on the Shandong units. The Japanese made some strategic changes as a result of these Chinese counter-attacks, they cancelled their original plan of directly advancing westwards from Nanjing to Wuhan, so that more troops could be spared for the push towards Shuzhou. The Japanese engaged Sun Zhen's 22nd Army Group in more than 30 days of ferocious combat south of Zuxian, inflicting heavy casualties on the Chinese and forcing them to withdraw to Teng County on 15 March. Defense of the county itself was delegated to the 41st Corps 122nd Division. Led by Wang Ming Sang, the 122nd was a division in name only, in reality it only consisted of seven companies. Even with the addition of scattered elements of the 45th Corps withdrawing from the Jaya River, its total strength was only a little over 2,000 men. A support group formed by citizens from Chengdu arrived at the county to support the troops from their hometown, gifting them a banner that read, Children of Tianfu, serve the country and resist the Japanese. On the 16th of March, the Japanese deployed a force primarily composed of the Watanabe Detachment to launch a three-pronged offensive on the county under the cover of heavy aerial and artillery bombardment. The Japanese successfully broke into the county the next day and began engaging the Chinese in house-to-house -house combat. By the afternoon, 
Chinese Division Commander Wang Mingsang had suffered multiple gunshot wounds, and proceeded to commit suicide. Nonetheless, the Chinese still stubbornly held on to the county for two more days. By dusk on 19 March, the Chinese had suffered 1,800 killed and 300 wounded. The remaining 300 wounded soldiers fought until they could no longer hold the line, before committing mass suicide by grenades in order to avoid capture. While Teng County fell, the NRA Military Affairs Commission redeployed Sun Lion Song's 2nd Army Group, a northwestern unit, and Tang Inbo's 20th Army Group, a Central Army unit, from the 1st War Area to reinforce the 5th War Area. While the 2nd Army Group consisted of two corps, its strength had been greatly diminished during the defense of Nyangtze Pass, reducing its actual strength to that of three divisions. Its order of battle was as follows. 30th Corps, Tian Shenan. 30th Division, Zhang Jingxiao. 31st Division, Qi Fengcheng. 42nd Corps, Feng Anbang. 27th Division, Huang Kaosong. 44th Brigade, Wu Pengju noting that northwestern units had been consistently capable at defensive combat, 5th War Area Commander Li Zongren gave the responsibility of defending Taijuang to Sun Lions Hong, who stationed Qi Fengcheng's 31st Division inside the district. Meanwhile, the 20th Army Group consisted of four full-strength, partially German-trained divisions. Its order of battle was as follows. 52nd Corps, Guan Linzheng. 2nd Division, Zheng Dongo. 25th Division, Zhang Yaming. 85th Corps, Wang Songlian. 4th Division, Chen Daqing. 89th Division, Zhang Zhu is Hong. The 85th Corps moved eastwards to Shizhou from Chongqiu along the Longhai Railway, before advancing northwards via the Jinpu Railway to arrive at Lincheng, where it immediately engaged the Japanese pressing southwards from Teng County. While the series of engagements up to this point had resulted in the Japanese suffering some losses, ultimately the overwhelming disparity in weapons and equipment had left the Chinese with no option but to form line after line of near suicidal resistance in successive desperate attempts to delay the Japanese advance. The Japanese utilized their devastatingly superior firepower and mobility to destroy Chinese lines of resistance eventually capturing Yi County and Zhaojuang by mid-March after two days of fierce combat. Tang Inbo requested Chiang Kai-shek for permission to send forth the 52nd Corps, which had been stationed at Boxian. Chiang complied, and the 52nd moved eastward along the Longhai Railway, passing Shuzhou and arriving at Taijuang, before advancing northwards past Yi County to attack Zhaojuang. The Chinese suffered heavy casualties here. For example, 2nd Division veteran Wang Jolin recalled in an interview in 1995 that out of his entire company, only 10 soldiers survived. Unwilling to risk losing the Central Army's elite divisions, Li Zongren withdrew both the 85th and 52nd Corps from their head-on engagements with the Japanese. Li believed it was better to instead open up a route for the Japanese to drive southwards into Taijuang, because, as long as Chi Fengcheng's 31st Division could hold on to the district, Tang Inbo's 20th Army Group could then maneuver around the rear of the Japanese forces to encircle them and give the Chinese the upper hand. Rinsuk Isagai's 10th Division was not actually supposed to have driven deep into enemy territory, and attacked Taijuang alone. Rather, it was supposed to have waited for Ripai Ogasu's 13th Division to close in on Shuzhou, and Itagaki Seishiro's 5th Division to pass Linyi for additional security. However, Isagai was confident enough in his forces, and planned to take out Taijuang in a single swift blow to complete the objective of clearing the Jinpu Railway. Thus, he continued advancing his force southwards towards the district. Seeing the Japanese 10th Division continuing to press forward, Tang Inbo ordered Chi Fengcheng to send out a small force to the north and attack them and lure them into Taijuang. This plan of baiting the Japanese into the district was successful, and Isagai deployed 40,000 troops and around 80 tanks to attack Taijuang from the north. Beginning on 21 March, 
the Japanese Air Force launched an extensive bombing operation on the Chinese positions, forcing the civilians to flee in terror. By the 23rd of March, artillery fire could be heard from inside the district. The next day, KMT Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek flew to the front lines to inspect the defenses, and left General Bai Chongxi there to help Li Zongren. The Battle of Taiyuan had begun. Chapter 3, Battle Chapter 3 Section 1, Taiyuan Taiyuan was situated in the southern end of Shandong, close to the border with Jiangsu. It was a large village under the administration of Yi County. Because southern Shandong had historically been the site of many wars, many of its villages had walls around them, akin to fortresses. Taiyuan was one of them. The district was 1.2 kilometers long from east to west. Its eastern end was the widest, with a width of 1 kilometer from north to south. Of its more than 10 streets, the three streets in the center had flourished with business before the battle. The district also had six wall gates and nine watchtowers, and was home to more than 3,000 households. On the eve of the battle its residents had all been evacuated to Fuyong and other areas. The district would quickly be reduced to complete ruins by Japanese aerial and artillery bombardment. The Grand Canal ran along Taijuang's southern border, just outside its southern gate. Following the canal south eastwards would lead to Yangzhou and eventually the Yangtze River. Following it northwestwards would lead to Jining and eventually the Yellow River. The district was approximately two kilometers east of the Taizhou Railway Line's northern station. Following the railway northwards would connect it to the Jinpu Railway, while following it southwards would connect it to the Longhai Railway via Zudun. To the northeast of the district was the Taiwai Highway which connected with the Zhaoji Railway at Wei County. Thus, Taiyuan carried significant economic importance in peacetime. In wartime, it served as the northern gateway to Shuzhou, and was a point that the Japanese had to pass if they wanted to continue advancing southwards. Chi Feng Cheng, commander of the Chinese 31st Division, positioned his 184th Regiment, led by Wang Zhen inside the district itself. He deployed his 182nd Regiment to the west, at the northern railway station, while the 183rd and 181st Regiments respectively guarded the western, and southern areas outside the district. Chi positioned his divisional command post at the southern railway station, which was on the southern bank of the Grand Canal. Chapter 3 Section 2 Battle On the 25th of March, the Japanese launched an all-out attack on Taiyuan, with a 300-strong contingent successfully breaching the northeastern gate. However, they were then forced into the Chengguang Temple. The Chinese then set fire to the temple, killing the entire Japanese force. The next day, the Japanese launched another assault through the breached gate. While they were again forced into the Chengguang Temple, the Chinese were unable to repeat the same tactic of burning the temple, since they had already burned everything that was flammable the previous day. The Japanese were thus able to use the temple as a base, from which they began to systematically clear the district block by block, launching at least seven attacks per day. In the house-to-house -house combat that followed, the Chinese struggled to hold the line in the face of vastly superior firepower. The Japanese eventually secured the eastern portion of the district, before also breaching the northwestern corner from the outside and capturing the Wenchong Pavilion. By this time, the district had been completely reduced to ruins, with not a single house left intact. The other three Chinese regiments fiercely fought the Japanese on the district's outer approaches, each expending six to seven thousand rounds of ammunition daily. These defensive actions on the outskirts were vital to preventing the Japanese from expanding the breach and annihilating the single Chinese regiment inside the district. Bai Chongxi had arrived at Taijuang on the same day as the initial Japanese attack, and quickly realized that the Chinese position would be untenable without additional firepower. Thus, he redeployed the Central Army's 8th Artillery Regiment to aid in the defense, and also borrowed a number of anti-tank guns from the First War area. 
The anti-tank guns arrived on the 27th of March and immediately went into action at the district's outskirts. At noon a Chinese battery engaged a Japanese squadron of nine tanks, knocking out five of them. The Chinese troops in the trenches cheered enthusiastically before scrambling out to swarm the Japanese tanks. Stunned, the Japanese did not open fire for an entire five minutes. Between March and April 1938, the Nationalist Air Force of China deployed squadrons from the 3rd and 4th pursuit groups of fighter attack planes in the long-distance air interdiction and close air support of the Taijuang operations, the 3rd PG based in Xiaogon Air Base and the 4th PG based from Hankou Air Base all having to refuel and load bombs at the forward Jumodian and Gida Air Bases. The Chinese airmen flying in their bombing configured I-15 fighter attack planes to Taijuang would only have 15-minute windows which to deliver their ordnance and loiter for targets of opportunity or air-to-air -air combat. Less than slash ref on 18 March 1938, Captain Zhu Jiaxun, sun a former Guangxi Ward Air Force officer under General Bai Chongxi, was part of the 3rd PG Strike Force of 10 I-15s led by Lieutenant Colonel Wu Ruliu against Japanese positions at Tengxian in Shuzhou, after bombing and strafing their targets in assistance to a Chinese army counter-strike, Captain Zhu spotted two IJAF Ki-2 attack bombers on a reconnaissance flight, single-handedly shooting down the one piloted by Captain Saburo Toita, while the other Type 93, plus a Type 88 was shot up and sent crashing down by the other I-15 pilots. On 24 March 1938, after successfully completing a strike against Japanese positions at Hanzhuang, Shandong, Lt. Col. Wu Ruiliu led 14 I-15s of the 3rd PG's 7th and 8th squadrons back to Gida Air Base, where upon arrival, they were attacked by the water-cooled IJAF fighters, while the I-15 pilots claimed the shooting down of up to six of the Type 95's, LTS. Mo Xu and Li Yingxian were shot down in the dogfight and killed, and Lieutenant He Xin, while safely bailing out of his stricken I-15, was then strafed in midair by the Japanese pilots and killed while descending in his parachute. The Ijaf ace fighter pilot Lieutenant Kosuke Kawahara claimed at least two of the kills over the I-15s, but was himself shot down and killed in this battle. On 10 April 1938, Lieutenant Zhang Guangming and Lieutenant Chen Halimin both engaged Japanese Ki-10 and Ki-27 fighters after delivering their ordnance on Japanese targets at Zhaojuang, but soon found themselves busy fighting in a wild dogfight. With Lieutenant Chen claiming a Type 95 shot down and then ramming a Type 97 after getting hit by machine gun fire that injured his leg, of which only Lieutenant Chen survived, parachuting to safety, while Lieutenant Zhang fought fiercely against several other Type 95s Type 97s, firing bullets into at least one of his opponents only for himself to finally be shot down by another, but also parachuting to safety. Both pilots would meet later on the ground as they were joined back together by help from local villagers who told Lieutenant Zhang of the wreckages of Chinese and Japanese planes nearby, with an injured Chinese pilot, and both returning safely, albeit Lieutenant Zhang tending to a seriously wounded Chen Haimin, back to Gida Air Base by ox cart. In a slightly different account to the popular Ro CF story of Lieutenant Chen's ramming of the Type 97, Captain Zhu Jiaxun was tailing a Type 95 fighter when he noticed in his peripheral vision, a Type 97 fighter diving on the tail of an unsuspecting I-15 pilot, and went after the Type 97 instead, firing his machine guns which appeared to have killed the Type 97 pilot as it gradually continued its dive right into the tail of the unsuspecting I-15, of Lieutenant Chen, who may have made a final split-second evasive, or perhaps a counter-attack maneuver just before impact. On 29 March, a small band of Japanese soldiers tunneled under Taijuang's walls in an attempt to take the district from within, they were caught by the nationalist, defenders and killed. On the same day, Wang Zhen was wounded in street fighting, and was replaced by Wang Guanwu. As the acting regimental CO, Wang Guanwu formed a 72-strong assault team in commemoration of the 27th anniversary of the 2nd Guangzhou Uprising and its 72 martyrs. Setting out from the south of the district, the assault team stormed Wenchong Pavilion from the south and east, annihilating the entire Japanese garrison with the exception of four Japanese troops taken as POWs. The Chinese had thus retaken the northwestern corner of the district. 
Of the 72 Chinese soldiers, 14 were killed in action. During this time, Sun Lion's Hong's 30th Division, 27th Division, and Wu Pengju's independent 44th Brigade had assembled at Taijuang's outer approaches, respectively positioning themselves at the western, southwestern, and eastern outskirts of the district. A unit from Yunnan, Luhan's 60th Corps also arrived at the 5th War area, and was incorporated into Sun Lion's Hong's 2nd Army Group's order of battle. It consisted of the 182nd, 183rd, and 184th Divisions. While the 31st Division continued to defend Taijuang and its surrounding areas, the aforementioned units launched simultaneous attacks on the Japanese north of the district, seeking to relieve the pressure on the 31st Division. The 30th Division, 27th Division, and 44th Brigade respectively attacked Nanluo, from the southwest, Sanalizhuang from the south, and Liu Jiahu from the east. The 60th Corps also joined the attack. However, the Japanese rushed in there and southwards from Yi County to bolster their position, repelling the Chinese attacks and forcing them to withdraw to their original positions. It was during this time that the Japanese 5th Division also drove southwestwards from Lin Yi. Led by the Sakamoto Detachment, it overran Xiangcheng before also capturing Aik. By this time, the Chinese 2nd Army Group's casualties had already reached 50%. The Chinese situation was desperate. The 31st Division having sustained extremely heavy casualties from seven days of continuous fighting, its commander, Chi Fengcheng, requested permission from 2nd Army Group Commander Sun Lian Song to withdraw to prevent complete annihilation. When 31st Division Commander Chi Fengcheng was relayed this order from Sun, he ordered the demolition of the temporary bridge over the Grand Canal, which was his division's only retreat route from Taijuang. Chi was determined to fight to the last man and defend the district until death. Li Zongren's strategy now completely relied on the ability of Tang Inbo's 20th Army Group to maneuver around the Japanese to cut off their supply lines, block their retreat paths, and form a counter-encirclement to surround and simultaneously destroy them from the inside and outside. From the outset of the battle, the 20th Army Group had been conducting offensive operations northwest of Taijuang, with the 85th and 52nd Corps engaging the eastern flanks of the Japanese 10th Division's rear positions at Zhaojuang, and Yi County respectively. By the 31st of March, the Chinese 52nd Corps had already fought its way to the outskirts of Beiluo. However, with the Japanese 5th Division capturing Xiangcheng during this time, Tang Inbo decided to adjust his strategy. He maneuvered his 52nd and 85th Corps eastwards to Lufang and Daliangbi respectively, with the 85th Corps' 4th Division holding at Lonling, just south of Aik, thus forming a defensive line stretching from Lonling to Liu Jiahu, and from Liu Jiahu to Lufang. Additionally, overconfidence had led the Japanese commanders to overlook the thousands of inconspicuous farmers in the area, who were affiliated with Li Zongren and cut communication lines and supplies, diverted streams, and wrecked rail lines. By late March, supplies and fuels were being dropped from airplanes to Japanese troops, but the quantity was insufficient. On the 1st of April, the Japanese 5th Division's Sakamoto Detachment rushed towards, with the aim of joining forces with the 10th Division at Taijuang's perimeter. Tang Inbo gave the Japanese free passage along Taiwai Highway, luring them into his trap. With ten days of continuous fighting inside Taijuang having resulted in extremely heavy casualties on both sides, the Japanese tried to break the stalemate by unleashing poison gas on the entrenched Chinese defenders in an attempt to dislodge them. Nonetheless, the Chinese continued to stubbornly hold on to the district. By the 3rd of April, the Tang Inbo's 20th Army Group had completely repelled the Japanese Sakamoto Detachment's intrusion. The Japanese were forced to withdraw all the way back to Lin Yi. The next day, Tang split his force into three columns to launch a coordinated counteroffensive on the Japanese 10th Division. The 52nd Corps would set out from Lonling, driving westwards to attack Yi County. The 85th Corps would set out from Daliangbi, 
also driving westwards to attack E County. The 75 Hours Corps, which had recently arrived in the region and was led by Zhou Yen, would set out from Cha and maneuver northwesterly around the Japanese eastern flank to arrive at Sanglu, in order to cover the 52nd and 85th Corps maneuvers. On the same day, the Chinese 2nd Army Group also launched a counteroffensive, with the 30th and 110th Divisions fighting northwards into Beiluo and Nigu respectively. On 6 April, the Chinese 85th and 52nd Corps linked up at Taodun, just west of Longling. The combined force then drove northwestwards, capturing Ganlagu. With the various Chinese counterattacks all accomplishing their objectives, the Japanese line finally collapsed, and both the 10th and 5th Divisions were forced to retreat. However, Vastly superior mobility allowed the Japanese to prevent a complete rout by the pursuing Chinese forces. Chapter 3 Section 3 – Reasons for the Japanese Failure Some of the most critical reasons for the Japanese failure are as follows. In the prelude to the battle, the Japanese were hampered by the offensive-defensive operations conducted by the various Chinese regional units which effectively prevented the three Japanese divisions from ever achieving their objective of linking up with one another. Despite repeatedly deploying heavy artillery, air strikes, and gas attacks, the Japanese were unable to force the Chinese Second Army Group from Taijuang and its surrounding regions, even as the defenders risked complete annihilation. The Japanese failed to prevent the Chinese 20th Army Group's maneuver around their rear positions, which cut off their retreat routes and gave the Chinese the advantage of a counter-encirclement. Following Han Fuju's insubordination and subsequent execution, the Chinese military's high command rigorously adjusted the tone at the top by clamping down on military discipline, which pervaded down throughout the ranks and resulted in even the most junior soldiers willing to risk their lives in the course of carrying out their orders. For example, a dare-to-die corps was effectively used against Japanese units. They used swords and war suicide vests made out of grenades. Due to lack of anti armor weaponry, suicide bombing was also used against the Japanese. Chinese troops strapped explosives like grenade packs or dynamite to their bodies and threw themselves under Japanese tanks to blow them up. Dynamite and grenades were strapped on by Chinese troops who rushed at Japanese tanks and blew themselves up. During one incident at Taijuang, Chinese subsidized bombers obliterated four Japanese tanks with grenade bundles. Chapter 4 – Aftermath The defeat was a significant blow to the Japanese military. It was the first major Japanese defeat since the beginning of the war, broke the myth of imperial Japanese military invincibility, and resulted in an incalculable benefit to Chinese morale. Amid the celebrations of the victory in Hankou and other Chinese cities, Japan initially denied its defeat and ridiculed the reports of the battle for days. However, it was reported in foreign newspapers. The battle also resulted in significant casualties and losses for the Japanese, who claimed to have suffered a total of 11,918 casualties. The Chinese claimed to have annihilated 24,000 Japanese troops in addition to shooting down three aircraft and destroying or capturing approximately 30 tanks and more than 10 other armored vehicles. The Chinese also recorded taking 719 Japanese troops as prisoners, and captured large quantities of military supplies, including approximately 70 artillery pieces, 100 cars and trucks, 900 to 1,000 machine guns and 10,000 rifles. Furthermore, the battle became an important symbol of Chinese unity since the various Chinese units that had participated in the campaign were all from a myriad of different cliques which had been at war with one another merely seven years ago. In particular, the Northwestern Army, which had played a significant role in fighting Jiang's loyalist forces as part of the anti-Chiang coalition, played a pivotal role in the campaign. Furthermore, Li Zongren, and Bai Chongxi, whom Chiang Kai-shek had previously labeled as rogues and expelled from the KMT for life, took a leading role in commanding the battle. Finally, the successful defense bought the Chinese time to withdraw government staff, refugees, factories, and resources in the lower reaches of the Yangtze River westward from the war areas via Hanko and thus played a pivotal role in supporting the overall Chinese resistance strategy.